Top of the Sports Max Zone for this Monday then. For the first time ever, the West Indies will play the qualifying round of a men's T20 World Cup by virtue of their eight-wicket defeat to Australia in their final group game of the 2021 event on Saturday. The Caribbean side has slipped to number 10 in the ICC World T20 rankings. Only the top eight teams qualify automatically for the Super 12 phase of the 2022 tournament, set for the 13th of October to the 16th of November in Australia. The likes of Afghanistan and Bangladesh are among the automatic qualifiers with the West Indies and Sri Lanka the highest profile teams that will have to qualify. The West Indies finished fourth in Group A of the ongoing tournament in the UAE, winning just one of their five matches. One man who has come to the defense of Kyron Pollard's uh, side is legendary West Indies batsman Sir Vivian Richards. In an article in the Antigua Observer, Sir Viv said, at the end of the day, we didn't quite accomplish it. It happens in all manners of life and whatever sport you may be participating in. It does happen, so you've got to look and say, hey, put my hand up and come again. Sir Viv also weighed in on the self-proclaimed universe boss, Chris Gale. I'm asking the fans not to just look at this tournament and to judge him from that because Chris has been a phenomenal player for us over the years and has kept the West Indies batting unit in terms of what uh, he represented over the years. He has kept that flag flying high. Well, there's so much for us to discuss, so let's turn to uh, two international cricket commentators, the veteran Fazir Mohammed, who is still at the peak of his powers, and young Nikhil Chandani. And uh, uh, gentlemen, um, huge disappointment for the West Indies, but based on the form going into the Australia game, uh, no real surprise that they were heavily beaten in that match as well. It was pretty much uh, the same as we saw in the previous four matches. Let's start with Faz. Yeah, uh, absolutely right uh, there, Lance. Um, uh, and while I take on board what Sudhavian Richards had to say, this was like a hurricane growing off the west coast of, the, of Africa. Uh, you knew it was coming, uh, and I don't think we really did too much about it, uh, because all of the data pointed towards it. Some might argue, how could Bangladesh uh, finish at the bottom, the West Indies finish second to last, yet Bangladesh qualified? It's because their body of performances prior to the World G20 were better than the West Indies. So here you have it, after having had to qualify for the 50 over World Cup uh, in 2018 for the 29th tournament, for which we finished second to last, and again, right after that, there was all that talk about Chris Gale. Here we are once again, uh, defending champions, finishing second to last, having to go into the qualifiers for the next World Cup in 12 months' time. That might be some sort of consolation that we don't have to wait too long for another World Cup. But there, there's a, a repetitiveness uh, about this in just a short space of time. That, that is quite distressing. Yeah, my question will be posed to Nikhil. Nikhil, the fact that we have dropped from number eight now to number 10, what do you make of that? Yeah, I think first hit the nail on the head in the sense that obviously it's a reoccurring problem and it's something that we have to be responsible for over the years, um, or probably over the last couple of years. But yeah, definitely we need to address some areas. Um, I think the whole model of T20 cricket, yes, we've won two World Cups playing this expansive power hitting cricket, but I think this World Cup alone has shown us how much the game has changed, you know, running singles, running twos, how important these games are. I, I look at the best teams, the Englands, the Pakistans, and I look at the Paul England, she wrote it down to tell you guys, 72 dot the first six over, and 58 singles compared to the best who had nine dot balls and 38 singles. So all in all, I think the model of, of our cricket needs to change and, and we have a year that will spend work. Yeah, and Faz, based on the couple of positive signs that we've seen from a few of our players, and I say a couple, and I mean, you know, it comes at rare occasions, it's very inconsistent. Do you get the sense that we can get back to a place where we will qualify um, automatically for these competitions as opposed to having to compete to get there? Well, of course we can, but not if we continue to behave the way we do as far as our attitude towards the game. And, 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 and yeah, I, I take Nikhil about uh, this World T20 underlining uh, all, all the men talk from England. Did we need the World T20 to tell us that? Wasn't that a, a common denominator throughout the, the matches played against South Africa, against Australia, yes, the matches against Pakistan? Wasn't that being said over 
over again and we want to reassure us that it would not work in that much of an issue. So the fact that it was exposed in the 2020 could hardly be seen as something that is particularly earth shattering because, as I said again, drawing the parallel of a storm moving off of the coast of West Africa, you have ample time precautions, ample time and whatever needs to be done to cope with the challenge that is in imminent. But we just didn't seem to do it. All right, um, Faz and Nikhil, um, we, we have to end the, the discussion with you guys here because we're having some audio issues here. So we'll, we'll try to get that worked out. But um, we, we thank you for the input uh, so far on the show as we review what has happened with this West Indies team in uh, the UAE and the disappointment of, uh, first of all, you know, not retaining or not even challenging strongly to retaining their title. And uh, we'll, we'll talk again in the future. But uh, we spoke about some comments there from Ivy Richards a short while ago, George and, and Mariah. And uh, I guess what he said, you know, you have to accept it. He, he feels that way. But I don't think most of the fans are thinking the way Sir Viv is thinking. I think because Sir Viv has walked the path before, yes. he knows that there will always be ups and downs. And thankfully, he was a part of, you know, success. And he knows what the up is like. Mm. But I'm also sure that he also went through rough patches in his career and whatnot. So I think he is trying to shift the narrative from, you know, mm. us, it already happened. What happened at the World Cup is already done and dusted. Mm. And I think Saviv is just trying to tell us that, you know, all hope shouldn't be done. Mm. Um, we should find some sort of positivity and maybe we can bring back West Indies cricket to where it should be. Mm. Except that based on what we've seen, it's so difficult, especially for the younger fans who, mm. um, you know, now are looking at the game and they're now trying to fall in love with the game. It's a bit difficult for them. Yeah. And I think, for George, what Faz was probably trying to say is that he, he heard Viv, he, 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 he accepted what Viv said, but I think Faz's point is that the writing was on the wall and there was a certain level of inevitability about what would have happened in UAE. Faz is correct. What is also correct is that if we had taken a young team with the Sherfe and Rutherfords and the Romario Shepherds and so forth and gotten a hiding like we got with the senior players, the opprobrium and the criticism would have been worse. It would have been more vapid than it is now. And mm -hmm. so perhaps it is that dying and being embarrassed with the older players is, is, is less of a fallout than if we had gone with the younger players because of course the inevitable question would have been well why did you uh, bench experience and go for callow youth at a tournament like this where these guys know the conditions these guys were playing in the IPL how could you sideline them for some other people on to the Sir Vivian Richards point Mariah is on to something there because guess what I think the appeal from the boys to well the, the, the posture that they adopted before the tournament and uh, the adversarial note struck by Pollard and company against the media especially, it was that that struck a chord with Surviv. And then he saw what happened between Chris Gale and Sir Kirkley Ambrose for some rather benign comments that Sir Kirkley made. Those comments shouldn't rile up anybody, let alone Chris Gale, but they did rile him up. Mm -hmm. So Surviv, examining the landscape, says, well, you know what? There'll be no shortage of criticism for these boys. They failed and they failed badly. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they are hurting you know what, I'm going to use my capital and I'm going to give them some support publicly because I, I want to counterbalance the, the, the criticism that they are facing. I want to, my, my thoughts should act as a counterbalance to the weight of the criticism that they are facing. And I think that's, that's a studied, I don't think it's an off-the-cuff reaction. Yeah. I think Surviv has analyzed it and said, you know what, I need to use my political capital, mm -hmm. my capital, cricketing capital, mm -hmm. in this way to offer some support. But deep down, he knows that the criticism is true because there's nothing that has been said about this band of men that is untrue about their form and their fitness mm -hmm. and the quality of performances. We should not let the cricketers teams escape or the coaches because guess what? I saw no evidence throughout this tournament that this team was being coached and fashioned in a strategic manner to respond to what the opposition was doing on the field or to do the things that were necessary to allow them to self-actualize. And I think that was a major failing in this World Cup, the quality of direction from the sideline. And I, I don't know if we're going to continue with the same setup. And George is saying that, and you know, I'm just thinking about how you all started the segment with saying the writing was on the wall. And I feel like we have a bigger problem at hand, George and Lance, because the fact that we had to choose either to go with a set of youngsters and 
we, we're already going with the mindset that, okay, if we go with the youngsters and we lose, they're going to blame us and say, like, okay, we didn't go with the se senior experienced players and whatnot. Then we went with the senior experienced players and we still had this um, result. I feel as if, you know, this is a, it points to a bigger problem where we aren't doing like what the powerhouses, the cricketing powerhouses are doing, like India and England. And we talk about this so many times, you know, an India B team could come and um, beat one of the top teams, their A team. And, you know, the, the manner in which they produce young players um, time after time, the system that is in place. And I feel like that is exactly what's our fault. We've spoken about it before and it sounds repetitive, but that's the problem. We don't have a structure. Well, you know, that, that is true, you know. Mm -hmm. That is true that we lack, we lack the structure and that causes its we own problems. We have nobody to choose from. But at the same time, at the same time, mm -hmm. cricket and professional sport is such that there are no gimmies. You can have the best team on paper. You have to go and perform. What is true is that countries that you would cite as examples with the proper structure in place and a vast array of talented people to pick from, experienced and young and upcoming, they too have failed to deliver at the World Cup. Let's not forget the India team that went to the, was it the 2016 T20 World Cup? that had won the Asia Cup, that had gone to Australia and won a T20 series, mm -hmm. that were the, they were all the rage, as we'd say in horse racing. They were four to five or one to nine to mm -hmm. win the tournament. And what happened? They didn't even get to the final. So I'm saying that teams with organization and, and, and everything else have failed. The thing about the West Indies is that where it is that you have seen teams with organization and structure fail at the tournament, but you didn't see that before the tournament started. Mm. With the West Indies, you, you saw it before the tournament started mm. that this is not going to work. And that's yeah. not a good sign. Yeah, and, and the thing is, uh, you mentioned India, George, but India's failure to get to the semi-finals must be seen from an Indian perspective as a, shocking, I them. As a shocking that's disappointment why I them. for them here yep. in this tournament. Yep. Because um, most people think, I am among them, that India has the best cricketers in the world. Player the for moment. player. Player for player. Yep. And they, they didn't make the semi, so problems there. We are getting unconfirmed reports, George and Mariah, that the selection panel of Roger Harper and uh, Miles Bascom has been reappointed for another two-year term. Uh, it's a story we'll be following, but uh, the source I have suggests that um, that is a, a pretty solid story. So um, we are likely to hear that, or if it's not so, hear that it's not so in, in the coming days. But I guess that will be a topic of discussion as well, because for many fans, the selection panel didn't do well on this trip. Yeah, most of the um, the, the co like most of the arguments and the criticism actually went down to the selectors and whatnot. So I think we have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. Go to break. Still a lot more to come on the Sportsmax Zone. Back in a moment. <laughs> 